And to join us now to break it all down, we've got our analyst on set with me, Leger Dusable and two-time Super Bowl champ Brian McFadden. Guys, let's start with the Bears who are on pace right now to have a historically bad offense, especially from the passing perspective. If we've got a graphic to show you just how bad they've been, they've been averaging about 116 yards per game. Just to give you some reference, right? The Saints last year had the worst passing attack in football, and they were still putting up 187. Taking a look at the first five games so far, Leger, I'm going to give you first word. What, what stands out to you about how bad they've been so far? Well, Tommy, let me just go down the amount of attempts they've had per game, right? Look at week one, only 17 pass attempts. Week two, 11. Now, they lost to Green Bay by, Green Bay by double digits in that game. Week three, 17. Week four, 22. Week five, 20, uh, 21. They haven't actually tried to let Justin Fields actually throw the ball down the field. It seems like offensive coordinator Luke Getzey has been scared to call up plays. Now, Justin Fields, to me, had his best um, game as a pro last week versus the Minnesota Vikings. Looked really comfortable in the offense. Was 12 of 13 for 135 and a touchdown in the second half alone. Finished the game, I believe, 15 of 21 for 208 yards. And he could have went for 240, Tommy. Dante Pettis dropped two passes. He just looked way more comfortable in the game. But this, this lets you know how they don't trust him, right? In the first half, right before halftime, third and nine from the eight-yard line. That's a passing down. They run the ball and get lucky, and Montgomery goes into the end zone and scores right before that. So they haven't even tried to get Justin Fields going. Make it a lot easier for him. Get him some RPOs. Get him on the edge. Use his athletic ability. Again, he looked really comfortable in that second half, but it feels like Luke Getzey is almost scripted things because he's, he's calling games scared because he's scared that Justin Fields is going to mess up. He looked comfortable in the offense in the last two weeks. He's thrown for over you know 20 attempts in the last two games. I think he gets it going tonight because he is more comfortable in the offense. Maybe Luke Getzey uh, trusts him a little bit more because he looked really good versus the Vikings. Yeah, I think those numbers, more of they're, they're more of an indictment in the system and the scheme than the player in Justin Fields because, as you mentioned, the opportunities has not they haven't been there for him. I mean, you you got high school quarterbacks that play varsity football throwing more passes than Justin Fields in the National Football League. That's absurd. That's something that you don't usually see. And maybe the the the, the production we saw in the second half against the Minnesota Vikings would warrant them to be more aggressive in putting the football in their young quarterback's hands and, and, and getting him in space. You talked about the RPOs, you talked about the bootlegs. I, for one, agree. I think he's a very, very athletic quarterback and he's at his best when he's able to be out in space to either throw the football or make plays happen with his legs. And, and that's what we saw in the second half against Minnesota and they almost, <laughs> almost mm. stole one from the Vikings as well based on his performance and how well the offense was moving. That's interesting. You guys bring up the RPOs. Get him comfortable because there's a stat out there that the Bears have a 17% sack rate this season. That's the worst by any team through five games. So don't put him in the pocket and let him sit there. Uh, let me follow up with that. Leger, I'll, I'll have you start because we've seen young quarterbacks. They've been tailored by their coaches to thrive, bring the college game with it. Why haven't we seen it so far outside of maybe Minnesota a little bit there? I would say it goes to the offensive coordinator again, right? You know this guy has a certain skill set, right? Use his athletic ability. Get him on, on the edge. There was a call that was called back. I think he had like a 40-yard touchdown run. It actually just dropped back and passed. Nobody was there. He took off. This guy is electric now. He he can throw the ball down the field once he gets comfortable in the offense, but get him comfortable in the offense. Get him comfortable. Watch David Montgomery. He threw a screen to him. Big explosive play for 20-plus yards. Get him some easy throws. Get him comfortable in the offense. Like me and B-Mac said, get him on the edge with some, you know, bootlegs. Uh, find Cole Komet in the, in the flat. That way he's more comfortable in the offense. We saw in the second half when he was comfortable, he can play at a high level. He can be efficient with the football, but you got to help your, your young quarterback out if you're Luke Getze. And see, that's the thing about coaching, regardless if you're a head coach or a coordinator, good coaches adjust to the player and to their skill set. They don't hope and expect for the player to adjust to what they're calling. No, it's the other way around. And it should be because you cannot coach every player the same. And the same can be said for what we're seeing with Justin Fields. They're making him do something that he hasn't really been called to do. And you look at what he's done when he has excelled. The small sample size here in the National Football League, or if you want to go back to his college days at Ohio State, allow him to get out in the pocket. Allow this man to be able to have a two-way goal. Get him involved in the RPO system. Similar to what we're seeing in Philly with, with uh, Jalen Hurts. They, they are allowing Jalen Hurts to be able to showcase his talents and his skill set. They're not bottling him, him up in the pocket and forcing him to do something that he's not comfortable in doing. And maybe, maybe they really studied the tape in the second half against the Vikings and 
now might feel like this is what we need to start the game. This is how we should start the game off because clearly that second half was night and day, and I think he's better suited to be in, involved in that type of scheme compared to what we've seen so far this season. All right, so new head coach Matt Eberflus cannot like what he's seen so far, going from one new head coach to a veteran head coach, Ron Rivera. <laughs> Guys, he's been around a lot of teams, a lot of press conferences the day after games, causing a stir among other things in D.C. right now, but of course, his comments on Carson Wentz causing a stir from Monday. Take a listen. Why do you think the teams in the division are farther ahead at this point? Quarterback. The truth is that this is a quarterback-driven league. And if you look at the teams that have been able to sustain success, they've been able to build it around a specific quarterback. Mm. Chose the quarterback here, though. So do you have any regrets about that, or how do you – no, I got no regrets about that quarterback. I think our quarterback has done some good things. There's been a couple of games that he struggled. Wow. And that leads us to be back. Hold tight. It leads us to the stats that matter presented by Penske. Again, when you gain the right transportation partner, your business gains ground. Carson Wentz this season. Take a look at NFL rank sacks with 20. That's third most. Six picks also third most. So, uh, BMAC, you had the wow. I'm going to start with you. What did you make of Ron Rivera's comments? Now, he did apologize after his quarterback said, Carson and I had a nice conversation, so I think we're ready to roll. Are they ready to roll, though? We, I mean, we will see. But my initial reaction to those statements was that's frustration. That is frustration. And remember, the last time we saw Washington on the football field, it was a game-winning interception the Tennessee Titans came away with that led to that victory. And correct me if I'm wrong, the commanders, they were right there in scoring distance. Just a bad decision by Carson Wentz led to that disappointing loss. And clearly that loss was still on Riverboat Ron's head in his mentals based on him saying what he said. And they might have apologized. He probably he apologized, as you stated, to Carson Wentz. But Carson Wentz still has that in, in the back of his mind. And one thing that we're starting to learn about Carson Wentz, his feelings and his emotions sometimes get in the way of his production. That's why he's basically on his third team, you know, being a highly invested draft quarterback on now on his third team. And the last two destinations, he's failed. And it's more so about the emotions and his feelings standing in way of him. And I'm concerned in this game right in this game tonight, based on hearing what his coach said to all of us, basically saying this guy has been a disappointment. Will his feelings stand in front of him in tonight's matchup against Chicago and hamper his production? Yeah, B Mac, you know this. I, I can't believe Ron Rivera said that. He's a highly respected coach in the NFL. He essentially, not essentially, he ran him over with the bus. If you look at Carson Wentz and what he did Sunday, he had his best game as a Washington commander. Threw for over 350 yards, two touchdowns. Was, he took advantage when, you know, the Tennessee Titans went man coverage found Duami Brown on two explosive touchdown passes. He was cooking. I know you talked about the, the errant throw at the end of the game on third down for an interception. If you go back and look at that, though, three straight plays in a row, right? They're at the two-yard line. They don't run the ball not one time. Now, you don't have any timeouts, but you have 19 seconds. You can run the ball at least once and get up and spike it. Tennessee did a really good job of dropping eight players. They dropped a defensive lineman, eight players. Carson Wentz literally had nowhere to go. To me, that's on the offensive coordinator. You got three, two to three plays right there, Tommy and, and B-Mac. Run the ball one time. Take the pressure off your quarterback and try to get in the end zone that way. When you're the quarterback in there, you know how it is, uh, B-Mac. The red zone is shrinking down. Eight guys dropped. There's nowhere to go with the football. So he literally was trying to force it into places he really couldn't get. I think he tried to throw it to J.D. McKissick with a defensive tackle and a linebacker there. And at the end, McQuarrie was right there, just broke on the ball with David Long. David Long gets an interception. There was nowhere for Carson Wentz to go with the football. I just can't believe his head coach went out and said that because you traded multiple picks to get Carson Wentz. So what does mm. that say about your organization now that you're talking about, well, the quarterback is the main difference why everybody is you know, further ahead in the NFC East. Well, obviously, you okay the GM getting Carson Wentz and had faith in him because you traded away multiple picks. And one of those teams in the NFC East, they've been winning ball games with their backup quarterback in Cooper Rush in the Dallas Cowboys. Exactly. So, I'm glad you brought that up, B Mac, because uh, we talk about quarterback again outside of Jalen Hurts in Philly, but of course, you have Daniel Jones and Cooper Rush, Washington one and four, all those other teams at least four and one. So Ron Rivera, C to see a veteran coach make that rookie mistake. So we've been talking about Carson Wentz, guys. He may be off to a slow start. However, no one is hotter 
than the former number two overall pick on Thursday Night Football. A perfect 6-0 win loss. You know, I care about ATS. He's five and one during that time in terms of minimum of five starts. And that's better than Brady, Manning, Mahomes, Wilson and Rogers. So again, as we digest how he works again with three different teams now in his career, Leger, uh, there's a Kirk Cousins joke to be had, but we're going to go on the <laughs> other side of things because on the flip side, Carson yeah. Wentz on Thursday night. Very good. He's been cooking on Thursday night. And again, Tommy and B, like I said, I thought he had his best game as a commander this past week. Versus the Tennessee Titans did some really good things as far as throwing those perfect dime drops to Dwami Brown in man-on-man -man coverage. If teams are going to come out knowing that the, the commanders want to run the football, he has to take advantage of the corners, especially the Chicago Bears. Their secondary has struggled at times this year, uh, giving up big plays down the field. So he's got to take advantage of that now. I am worried because Jahan Dotson and also the tight end Logan Thomas look like they won't be playing today. They didn't have them last week, but those are pivotal pieces to this offense. We saw Jahan Dotson the first couple weeks of the season really take off. Not having him is going to hurt. All right, Samuel, of course, McLaurin, there's still the weapons to be had. And speaking of weapons, BMAC, Brian Robinson Jr. getting to start for multiple reports. Now, Antonio Gibson still going to be available as well, but what do you make of the news just hours before kickoff? Amazing story. I mean, a guy a few weeks ago, I think he was shot twice, mm -hmm. right? And now being able to not just be a part of the team, but making his, his first official start is an amazing story. So you don't know how productive he will be, but just being able to be out there in the huddle with his teammates is, is unbelievable. And I think he's going to be fired up. I think his team should be fired up as well. And this could, you know, improve the morale of the team seeing number eight back in the lineup, basically, you know, being able to defeat a, a, a tragedy, to say the least, to be able to return and get back and playing football and do it at a high level. B Mac, I got chills seeing him come out of the tunnel last week, the 50 Cent's mini man. I mean, what, what class act by the Washington Commanders after what this kid's been through? You said it been <laughs> shot, was shot twice. A lot of people didn't think he could potentially maybe come back this year. Maybe he'd have to wait till next year. But it shows his determination and grit. And literally, I think it was like maybe even a week after he got shot, he was in the building performing his rookie duties. They love this kid on this team. Now, I have Antonio Gibson on my fantasy team, so it's going to hurt me. But in the long run, it's bigger than fantasy football. I'm just glad to see him out there being able to get the start. He actually led all ball carries and carries last week, so this isn't a surprise. I believe he was going to start the season if that accident didn't happen. Yep. Great story. Made that debut against the Titans. And again, you guys, he was shot twice in the knee and attempted robbery and carjacking roughly six weeks ago. So again, had all that promise before the season, hit that snag, but is back in full force. And again, we're going to see it play out in prime time on Thursday night. We're also going to see it play out, guys. Some defenses that have underachieved so far this season. Both the Commanders and Bears are giving up at least 21 points per game. And this is your guys' forte. BMAC, you see that? You make you feel a little sick in the stomach when you're seeing two teams giving up so many points so far? No question. I mean, the expectations, they were pretty high. More, They were higher for Washington because they have 20 first rounders, former first rounders on their defense, it, it seems like, not to mention some guys they really paid nice contracts to. So they have invested a lot of collateral in their defense, and that has been the most disappointing thing in regards to what we've seen. The investments, the way they've tried to improve the personnel just hasn't, it hasn't panned out on the football field. So you talk about scoring, allowing points. That's what they're doing. Last week, they couldn't stop the ground and pound attack in Tennessee. Derrick Henry is still running over the commanders. So this has been a letdown. We talked about some of the concerns offensively for Washington and Carson Wentz and the offensive line. But I think the, the biggest letdown so far this season has been the commander's defense. And then transitioning to Chicago, I mean, the personnel, we felt like this would be an up and down year for Chicago. I think it's safe to say before week one, we all had higher expectations for the commanders based on the personnel, based on the investments they've made on the defensive side than Chicago. But yet and still, it's the windy, windy city. They expect to see more consistency on the defensive side. We just haven't seen it yet. But I'm, I've been more disappointing, uh, disappointed with Washington than Chicago based on, like I said, the investments they've made on the defensive side. Exactly, BMAC. I mean, this, this Washington Commanders team is usually led by their defense. Now, Chase Young is still out. Montez Sweat, welcome back to the NFL, had two sacks, played really well. Last week, added another tackle for loss. That defensive line had five sacks. It kind of looked like the old defensive line that we're used to seeing from the Commanders last week. And they gave up 21 points, which, again, that's too much on the defense. You want to aim around like 17 points 
per game. But William Jackson is a guy that's asked to be traded. He's been getting cooked out there, and it's been a struggle for him. Um, they've got a lot going on on the, on, on the commander's team, not just on offense, but on, on defense as well. If you look at the Chicago Bears, they're just a young team. Jaquan Bursker is a guy I really like at the safety position. I like them coming out at Penn State. He's been a nice playmaker for them. Ro- 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 uh, Roquan Smith is as good as advertised. Kyler Gordon has made some plays. They're just a young team coming along. So you're going to see a lot of young mistakes out there. They're going to give up a few plays here and there. But I think they played actually pretty well last week against the Minnesota Vikings, more specifically in the second half when they needed to get some stops. They also were aided by a missed field goal by the Minnesota Vikings. But this young team is coming along. But to be back point, you have to be disappointed in how the commanders have played throughout the year. The defensive line came along last game. Let's see if they can add to that and play well this week. You guys are both in agreement. Again, the commander's defense has been more disappointing so far this year. And not only were they a top yeah. five defense last year, it wasn't that long ago in the postseason. They were wreaking havoc on Tom Brady, and everybody thought this was going to be the start of a very good defense for years to come. It has not played out that way so far. Taking a look at props for tonight, Thursday night football. Both of you guys have collected and put together uh, multiple picks, but Leger, you've got three, so you beat out BMAX too. So I'm going to have you go first, lay it on us here. Yeah, my first one is anytime touchdown for David Montgomery. He had been hurt, came back last week, got into the end zone. We talked about it earlier, it was third and nine, and they ran him. Uh, up the field on uh, it was third and eight from the nine yard line they ran him up the field he gets into the end zone darnell mooney over 45 and a half yards receiving i talked about it justin fields has gotten more comfortable passing the ball the last two weeks he's his main target and he's gone over 45 and a half the last two uh games terry mclaurin over 54 and a half receiving yards he's done that four of the first five games i think he gets going again jahan dotson not playing this week i think he gets at least eight to nine targets today Well, for me, I got two guys, and I'm really, really high on both of my selections. Number one, Justin Fields. Anytime touchdown, get this man in space, especially in the red zone. Allow him to have the option of throwing and running. And I do believe he's going to cash in big time with a rushing touchdown. Or it could be a simple quarterback sneak on the goal line that will fulfill that prop for all of us, whoever it is that's following my advice. And the second one for me, I'm so – I was excited – Anyway, but now I'm more excited knowing that he is making his first start. That's any time touchdown for Brian Robinson. Give me a Brian Robinson any time touchdown. And if I know anything about the game of football, if I know anything about organizations, I know anything about players who find a way to get back into it with their teammates after enduring something difficult, tragedy like, they try to reward that said player. So you better believe this one right here. I'm super confident that there will be an opportunity for Brian Robinson to get to the end zone, regardless of what the score is. They got to find a way to get this young man into the end zone. So give me an anytime touchdown for Brian Robinson. I love that one because usually we say take emotion out of betting, right? But this time you got to take it emotional, take it for him to do that. It's going to be a fun watch tonight. Fun watch is is something that I put lightly (laughs) here for this game. That is a total of 38, right? And pick them, the line may have moved in favor of Washington by a point. But again, it's right around a pick them in this game. BMAC, I'll start with you. Do you have a play on either side or total tonight? I'm going to keep it real with you guys. And know usually <laughs> I have my ticket ready. And whatever I talk and discuss with you guys, I'm actually betting. But this game, I'm afraid to take either side. I'm afraid to take the total or picker side because I don't know what to expect. But I have advice for the ones that are watching us that has that, they have that itch, that betting itch. And they got to just bet on something. So for you guys that are betting on this game because you have an undeniable itch, take Chicago. And here's why. I believe we might see some mental hurdles from Carson Wentz based on what his head coach said about him to all of us. They don't believe in Carson Wentz because if they believed in Carson Wentz, he wouldn't have made those statements. They they are frustrated with Carson Wentz. And I think Carson Wentz is starting to feel that as well. And like I said earlier in the show, sometimes his feelings, his emotions, they stand in front of him. And oh, by the way, his offensive line, they have done him no favors at all. The last three games alone, he's been sacked 14 times. There will be an opportunity for Chicago to put pressure on Carson Wentz. And let's go Justin Fields. Let's see what, can you recreate what you did in the second half against Minnesota? I think he will have that enough to be able to cover the spread. It's basically a pick so for you guys that have that betting itch, take Chicago. That, that would be the way I would go if my itch was so severe that I had to put something on this game. But luckily enough for me, my itch is all right, so I'm going to stay away from it. See, see B- BMAC, now I'm nervous, right? Because I'm feeling the same way. I'm taking Chicago. And I know, Tommy, you put the graphic up. Carson Wentz has been money on Thursday night football. 
I believe he's six and zero. But this Washington Commanders team is dealing with so many distractions. And plus, I think Carson Wentz is dealing with the shoulder injury as well. So if you take all that into account, you got players like William Jackson on the defense asking to be traded a day before the game. Plus, their owner, Dan Snyder, this rumor has come out about him. They just have a lot going on. I think Chicago Bears get it done. They're 2-0 and at home already this year. They beat the 49ers already at home. I think they get it done. It's almost a pick em. Take Chicago Bears in the money line. All right, so you guys are on the same side. By the way, before we let you go, because BMAC, we're going to say goodbye in just a second. Speaking of pick em, I want to ask you guys, because tonight the Bears are unveiling their orange helmets, alternate uniforms, and we know that the Commanders did a couple weeks ago with their all blacks. They're going to be wearing the whites tonight. But it's a pick em of which one do you like better? BMAC, I'll start with you. Bears in that orange or the Commanders in the all blacks? And that Commanders in their all black needs. That, that's nice. I, I, are they wearing this tonight? They're wearing the all black tonight? No, they're not going to wear it tonight, but this was from two weeks ago against Dallas, so it's like Yo, best alternate Cowboys. uniform. Yep, best alternate yes, uniform. Yes. Which one? All black. <laughs> all black for me. Leger, what it's, about you? it's not even close, Tommy. The all black is too clean. I mean, Chicago Bears are like a pumpkin patch. I, I don't know what <laughs> yeah, they got going orange. on with that. It's a little bit too much orange. And I know we were talking about this in the newsroom. Like, if you're going to, you know, be that committed to it, go all the way. Because I think it's blue pants, right? Yeah. Not, Go all, all the way, way Either way, yeah. Go all and, the way and, and they, be had that an, they had an opportunity, by the way, uh, the 30th of this month for Halloween against the Cowboys to unveil the oranges, but they decided tonight's going to be the mm. night they're going to do it. Color rush. All right. <laughs> both guys on the Bears, both guys on the Commander. VMAC certainly appreciate it. All things covered. VMAC MP twice. They're reacting to that Vikings nerve-wracking Week 5 win over the Bears. Previews of Week 6, Dolphins, Russell Wilson struggles, and roughing the passer changes. All that and more. Scan that QR code and download and follow. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis. No yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.